Welcome to the official launch of the online Locker Tours. I think that you will all agree that the way we consume information has changed dramatically. And to meet the rising demand for digital content over the last year, we first took on a challenge to create a series of webinars to bring you to Locker when you could not reach us. The intention in the end was always to produce this 360 tour of Locker and online introductory tour experience not to replace a visit in person to Locker, but to allow people to visit virtually first before they reach us in person. Now, this absolute embrace of the online world has changed the way that we will operate, not just for now, but long into the future. And what we are launching today includes a 360 tour of Locker that is most suitable for industry. The 360 tour allows you to visit Locker take 360 views, read information panels, and understand the site layout. It is suitable for sharing online and for virtual presentations. The centerpiece for our launch today is a 27 minute introductory tour of Locker. This production features the Locker tour guides and never before seen drone footage of the historic sites maintained by the OPW. The running order for this morning is as follows. Our first speaker is Sarah McCutcheon, Local Authority Archaeologist for Limerick City and County Council. Sarah will be followed by Anya Barry, Chairperson and Tour Guide for Locker Development. Minister for the OPW Patrick O'Donovan will then take to the stand to officially launch the online Locker Tours. And to close the event, there will be a short virtual presentation to the webinar speakers and tour guides. You are welcome to ask questions throughout on the live chat feature. At the end of this launch, the tour will be available on our social media channels for you to watch in your own time. I would ask you to use the tag Visit Locker for any social media posts that you are sending out today. And formalities aside for the moment, I would now like to introduce you to our first speaker. Sarah McCutcheon has been a lifelong friend of Locker. As local authority archaeologist for Limerick City and County Council, Sarah is tasked with protecting the very features that make Loch Gur a truly unique location. Sarah, I would like to invite you at this point to take to the stand to mark the launch of the online Loch Gur tours. Thank you, Kate, and thank you for your continuing hard work and innovation in Loch Gur. I am delighted on behalf of Limerick City and County Council to take part in the launch of the online tours of Loch Gur. The lake at Loch Gur, some of the shoreline, Lake Bog and Red Bog, and several important archaeological monuments came into public ownership in the late 1980s as the residue of the estate of the Count de Salus. Since that time, Limerick County Council and laterally Limerick City and County Council has had the care of this magical corner of Limerick. The National Monument Service in what is currently the Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage also holds a large portfolio of archaeological monuments immediately around the lake and dispersed through the wider area, some on public and some on private lands. These sites are maintained on the Minister's behalf by the National Monuments section of the Office of Public Works. The sites which are currently accessible to the public are maintained to a high standard by the local OPW team. It is a number of these sites which form the subject of the virtual tours which we are here to launch this morning. The Loch Gur area comprising the lake and the surrounding district contains an archaeological landscape of international importance. There are currently over 200 recorded sites in the four townlands surrounding the lake. These sites incorporate all aspects of human coexistence with the land, including ceremonial, domestic and agricultural activities. The quality, density and range of archaeological sites concentrated in this relatively small zone indicates the importance and sanctity of Loch Gur to humans from prehistory to early Christian and medieval times. The history of our interaction with the environment through all periods is written on the Loch Gur landscape and the unspoilt natural beauty of Loch Gur 
augments the setting of the sites, which are contained in a well-preserved cultural landscape. Lochgar is also very important ecologically, being a proposed natural heritage area. Within the catchment of the lake and the two nearby bogs, there are no less than 14 different natural habitats, some containing rare and endangered flora and fauna. In addition, under the Wildlife Act, Lochgar is designated as a wildfowl sanctuary, providing an important resource for overwintering birds. Lochgar has long been recognised as a unique site. It attracted antiquarians and historians from the 17th century onwards. The reduction of the water levels in the lake in the mid-19th century led to the recovery of a large amount of artefacts from all ages, including the famous Late Bronze Age Lochgar Shield. Many of these are held in notable museums in Ireland and Britain. These discoveries focused renewed attention on Loch Gur, and excavations and detailed surveys began. The first excavation was in 1860 by Professor Harkness from University College Cork, and this association with UCC continued under its Department of Archaeology. One of the most important series of excavations was carried out by Sean P. O'Reardon intermittently between 1936 and 1954 first in his role as professor in UCC and later in UCD. The excavations included 14 sites on the Nakadoon Peninsula, as well as many of the premier sites, such as Grangestone Circle, the stone forts at Carrigal, the Wedgegrave and the farmstead at the Spectacles. These early excavations in what was the new Irish state were highly influential and meant that much of what was known in the study of Irish prehistory throughout the 20th century was based on evidence from Loch Gur. The UCC connection remained strong under Professor O'Kelly, who was responsible for a very thorough survey of the wider area and worked with the agencies to develop the Interpretive Centre in 1980 and produced written guides for visitors. Tours for first-year students in UCC always included a day-long trip to Loch Gur, as I can confirm. More recently, the UCC connection has been with Rose Cleary, who has continued the research excavations at prehistoric sites on Loch Adoon and at Grange, as well as the recording of medieval house sites during the building of the car park. Most importantly, Rose has recently brought all of the excavations and surveys in and of Loch Gur into one seminal publication where she has applied modern techniques to review and reassess the older results. These excavations and their ensuing publications allow for worldwide access by professionals and interested members of the public to the wonders of Loch Gur. They are also a source of information for locals and visitors and provide a strong, authentic base for the storytelling and interpretation of the local guides. Limerick City and County Council is very aware of its responsibilities in caring for such a precious heritage area, which has many diverse and sometimes conflicting requirements that need to be finely balanced in order to preserve a fragile ecosystem and landscape. Having strategic partners, such as the National Monument Service and the Office of Public Works, is of great assistance, and the large portfolio of archaeological sites in state ownership ensures their preservation. The Council has also been able to draw down funds from Fall to Ireland to open up access around the lake and to produce the Environmental Management Study, which provides a baseline for the development and continuing care and maintenance of Loch Gur. The best partnership, however, is with the local community. In this regard, the Council has been very lucky to have been able to cooperate with Loch Gur development. Since it took on the running of the Interpretive Centre in 2011, Loch Gur development has worked tirelessly to improve the facilities and to constantly refresh and upgrade the offering for visitors to Loch Gur. These online tours represent the latest in a long list of innovations and will, I hope, prove very popular and entice people to visit in person. 
I would now like to hand over to Anya Barry of Loch Gur Development, who is one of those highly motivated local people. Thank you, Sarah, for that very kind introduction. I've been on the board of Loch Gur Development now for over 20 years, but my connection to Loch Gur actually goes way back. Many of you will remember my father, Michael Quinlan. He was the principal of Lockhart National School for many years, and he was also a founding member of Lockhart Development. His vision was to put Lockhart on the map, as he recognised its global importance. And I don't just mean from an archaeological and historical standpoint, but also because of the social history, the wealth of stories, folklore, songs and tradition that exist in this area. Many of you who knew him will remember his deep connection to Lockhart, which he passed on to family members and to his students. And it was absolutely impossible not to be swept away by his enthusiasm and his unfaltering belief in the global importance of Loch Gur. In 1996, Dad set up the Loch Gur Tour Guides as a way of bringing Loch Gur to life for the people who visited here. He recruited and he trained a number of local tour guides who began delivering tours each Wednesday and Friday evening. These included Deborah Hogan, Mary O'Grady, Mary Hayes, Michael O'Sullivan, George Finch, Tom Lynch, Tom Tierney and Francis O'Donovan. But over the intervening years we gained new tour guides, but we always strictly adhered to the tour guiding principles that he instilled in us. Because he was absolutely adamant that tour guiding was not only about passing on facts, instead it was a way to connect people with our place through storytelling. Tour guiding was to be a performance, so people would leave the area willing to spread the gospel of Loch Gur, based on the experience that they had here with our tour guides. As tour guides we were trained to be engaging and entertaining, and sharing our own stories to draw the listeners into the very essence of Loch Gur. You see, the heart of Loch Gur has always been its people, from the first farmers who came here 5,000 years ago, to the tour guides themselves, and to the local community who live here and are the guardians of these valuable sites. In this online tour offering, you will see some of our guides present a short three minute clip of the most important archaeological sites in Loch Gur. But I do have to acknowledge that it's difficult to portray on video the enthusiasm and the passion that our tour guides normally convey. That's something that you're going to have to come and experience for yourself. However, you only have to read the reviews of these tours on TripAdvisor to recognise how people view these. Quotes such as, quite possibly the best tour guide we have ever experienced, are testament to the excellence of our guides and the experience that they offer. This online tour of the various sites has been compiled to cater for all levels of interest, as history, folklore and archaeological facts are lightly introduced to the backdrop of spectacular drone footage captured by Jack O'Shea, whom I would like to thank openly at this point for his professionalism and endless patience. Jack took the footage for the 360 degree tour, which we are also launching today. I also now need to thank the tour guides who gave so generously of their time to record. And the featured tour guides were George Finch, Mary O'Grady, Tom Tierney, Siobhan Kirby, John Carew and Tom Lynch. As Chairperson of Lockhart Development, I would also now like to sincerely thank Limerick City and County Council for their continued support. Directors Gordon Daly and Sean Coughlin and their respective teams, along with Falcher Ireland, have worked tirelessly in partnership with Lockhart Development to place a renewed focus on improving what is on offer here. A special mention must go to Sarah McCutcheon, representing Limerick City and County Council today, who has consistently shown her unwavering commitment to preserving and protecting Loch Gur for future generations. We look forward to continuing to work with all of you in the coming years to revitalise the tourism sector after what has been a particularly challenging year. There's no doubt that Loch Gur, along with every other visitor attraction and tourism provider, was deeply impacted by the global pandemic. But this forced us to find new ways to communicate with our audience on a global level. Pre-COVID, our visitors found us. 
but with these new online offerings we can now reach out to the world. These online tours will never replace a visit to Lochgar. But what it does offer though is a way to view just a fraction of what you will find here from the comfort of your own home. Support to develop the online tour was granted through the Audience Engagement Fund issued by the Department of Culture, Heritage and the Gaeltacht. Their support for this initiative is really greatly appreciated for it also covered audience engagement work carried out through our webinars over the past year. And actually, I see from the virtual attendance list that we have many of the webinar speakers watching this morning. The Board of Lockgar Development extends a warm note of thanks to all of you for your support in moving Lockgar online for the first time in history. Over the millennia, Lockgar has seen many changes and has shown a continuous capacity to adapt when faced with challenges. In the last eight years, we've seen huge advancements to meet visitor demands. We now have a playground, a fairy trail, and this year saw the arrival of the kiosk where freshly brewed coffee is available and already proving a hit. These things do not happen easily, and I must acknowledge the tireless commitment of Kate Harold and all of the staff at Lockgar for ensuring an excellent customer experience for our visitors. Kate's vision and her ability to connect key stakeholders is why we're here today. Without her determination to adapt to changing circumstances and to move with the times, we would not have these exciting online offering. So Kate, on behalf of the Board of Locker Development, I would like to truly thank you publicly for all that you continue to do to make Locker a visitor destination of choice. Before introducing Minister O'Donovan, it's accurate to say that behind every great visitor attraction, is an even greater community. To reach Lochgar, you will have to travel along extremely scenic winding country roads, which many visitors find part of our charm and appeal. Along these roads live real community members who support us in the work that we do. We listen to their suggestions and we put their needs to the forefront of what we do. So for members of the Lochgar community watching this morning, I would like to thank you too, on behalf of Locker Development, for your input into any new ventures that we undertake. To Minister O'Donovan. Minister, you were invited to officially launch these online tours today because you understand the potential of Locker and the significance of this site. In your official capacity as Minister for the Office of Public Works, Locker Development formally thank you for the obvious hard work invested by the OPW crew members who takes such exceptional care under the supervision of Declan Sheedy for the Great Grange Stone Circle, the Spectacles Field System and the Wedge Tomb, to name just a few. The online locker tour covers mostly OPW maintained sites, whose brilliance I believe has never appeared so clearly as it does through the expert drone footage shot by Jack O'Shea when combined with the personal interpretation offered by our guides. I believe that today not only marks the official launch of the Lockhart Tours, but I hope it is the beginning of an even deeper relationship that will be fostered with the OPW and Lockhart Visitor Centre to improve what is on offer from Lockhart as one of Limerick's leading heritage attractions. So I would now like to hand you over to Minister Patrick O'Donovan, Minister of State for the Office of Public Works, to officially launch the latest online offering from Lockhart. Thank you. Thanks, Anya, and hi, everybody. You're very welcome here to Lochgar, and you're very welcome to County Limerick. I'm delighted as a local person, as a Limerick person, to welcome you all here to Lochgar, to this absolutely fabulous part of South Limerick. This is one of the most historic parts, not only of Limerick and of Ireland, but of all of Europe, because we know that over 6,000 years ago, people were here in Lochgar, and we can trace men from 6,000 years ago right to modern times. So Lochgar has everything to offer. It has the history of 6,000 years of 
people's progression here in this part of Limerick, but it also has modern amenities, everything for a family, everything that people want to see and offer a, a modern a family that wants to visit this part of County Limerick. And what we're trying to do is encourage people to come here, to experience this beautiful part of County Limerick uh, and to experience the welcome that this part of County Limerick has to offer. And as Minister for the Office of Public Works, I'm delighted to launch this collaboration between the local community and government because with government, this project has been funded and uh, has been able to be launched today with funding through the Department of Arts, Heritage and the Gaeltacht. And it's a collaboration between the community, led by the local community here, led by a local voluntary committee here in Loch Gore, with the support of Limerick City and County Council, with my own department uh, and with other government agencies as well. And this area around Loch Gore, we know has hundreds of recorded national monuments. And it also has the spectacular scenery of this part of South Limerick and the also magnificent amenities that the rest of the area here in East Limerick has to offer. So the only thing that I have to do is to welcome you here online and encourage you to enjoy the visit online, virtually, and as well as that, to encourage you to get down here into this part of Limerick when you get the opportunity post-COVID, uh, if you get the opportunity to come here to Limerick. If you're visiting uh, nationally, you're more than welcome to sit into your car and come here. But as, if you're an international visitor, uh, you're also very welcome uh, to come to, to Ireland and experience this part of Limerick uh, in the near future. So, Buntan of Asen Trail, Buntan of Asen Truss, Gunari Gugaliv, Falta Golakkar, Buntan of Asen. Thank you, Minister O'Donovan. The moment has almost arrived when you can view never before seen footage of Loch Gur. Before bringing this event to a close today, I would like to take this opportunity to make a virtual presentation of framed arc images to the original webinar speakers to recognise their help over the last year to bring Loch Gur live online for the very first time in history. These expert webinar speakers included Billy McGlynn, Rose Cleary, Matthew Potter and John Moran for their part in the History and Archaeology webinar. Then we had Moncon McGann, Mark Patrick Hedeman and Noreen Irian for the Spirit of Place webinar. And finally we had Nora Patton, Paul Ryan, Frank Prendergast and Niall Smith for their part in the Archaeoastronomy webinar. Many thanks to all of you for your never-ending support that you offer to Loch Gur. For those of you who missed the webinars, they are available to watch back on the Locker YouTube channel. Presentation gifts will be sent to you by post. Now, for the Locker tour guides, you will receive a framed image of the Great Grange Stone Circle taken by Jack O'Shea to recognise your contribution in bringing Locker online for a global audience to view. As a summary point before closing, Speakers today have emphasised that the online tour was created not as a way to replace a visit to Locker, but as a way to virtually experience Locker first before visiting with us in person. And to that end, I extend an invite to all of you to visit with us in person. Until then, I hope you enjoy watching the online tour of Locker. You will now find the newly released link to view the full tour on our social media channels. Thanks to all of you for watching the official launch today.